Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make something fabulous. This thing right here. Okay, did I oversell it a little bit? Well, it may not look so great right now, but it's going to be fantastic because this is a wax for a bezel. And oftentimes, manufacturers of costume or fashion jewelry, if they're producing thousands of pieces, they need something that's quick and easy to set stones in. Now, they may not always set them. They might glue them into place, but this will give them a great armature for holding a stone on a jewelry piece. And in another video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use this same type of bezel to make a ring, and I'm going to show you how to set it. It's a little tricky because this is a thicker bezel. Now, let me show you what you're going to need in order to make something like this. So starting right here, I've got a couple of waxing tools. One's got a bent end and the other one's straight. They function differently and I'll show you what, how in just a bit. I've got a very soft toothbrush and this is a little wax pot. It's filled with blue inlay wax. Here is a double-ended wax file. Here's an emery board. I've got a X-Acto blade, a pair of dividers, my jeweler saw loaded with a wax uh, saw blade. It's a spiral blade. I've got some oil, uh, orange oil. This is used for polishing and I'm going to use that in combination with a knee-high stocking. Fancy. <laughs> Here's a little uh, alcohol blowtorch. In this case, I'm just going to use the actual burner. We've got some talcum powder, a lighter to light the torch, and moving up here, I've got a piece of pink 22 gauge thickness sheet wax, and I, it's sitting on top of a piece of baking parchment paper. This is good to know about because if you're working on a surface that you don't want to get wax on, put this down on top of it. It's also good for putting on top of tools if you want to slide a wax piece off later. All right, I've also made myself a nice little wax cutting board. This is just a piece of acrylic sheet. I've got a metal ruler with the metric scale on it. Remember, the jewelry industry, it's international. It works on the metric system, not inches. Here is a piece of blue wax. This is about four millimeters thick, and this is a file wax or phyllo wax. Okay, and then over here I've got my OptiVisors because I'm getting old and blind, and I have a paper towel. The paper towel is important because we sometimes need to wipe off tools as we're working. Okay, so let me show you how to get started. The first thing that I want to do, since I'm going to be working with a stone of this size, is I'm going to take my stone and I'm going to just position it onto my wax. And you want to cut maybe about that much wax. In other words, give yourself a nice little margin around the stone in which to cut. So using the jeweler saw with the wax blade in it, you're just going to cut that piece of wax off. Next, I'm going to use my double-sided file to remove the saw marks from the surface of the wax. And once I've taken down the saw marks quite a bit, I'll flip the file around and use the finer side to finish it off. I'm removing the saw marks because they're quite coarse and unless you really want that texture to show on your piece, you probably want to get rid of them. So once I finish up with the fine end of the file, I end up with something that looks like this. Now, once I've got my piece prepared like that, I'm ready to start marking it for work. It's a little bit of a precision job, so take your time. The first thing that you want to do is you want to position your stone with good margins around it in the middle of your piece of wax. Then you want to take something sharp, and in this case I'm just going to use the tip of my X-Acto blade, and I'm going to mark all the way around the stone. Now take your time, don't, don't uh, slip, because this is actually going to be an important marking that will affect the development of your piece. Once you finish marking where the stone sits, then you can take a little bit of the talcum powder and you can 
create more of a high contrast image. So just a little bit of the powder on your fingertips, and just rub it right into that. And you'll end up with a much more high contrast image that you can work with. And it's important to see where your line is so that you can actually be precise with your work. Now the next thing that you want to do is you want to take your dividers and set them to create a margin around this piece. You can make it as wide or as narrow as you like. In this case, I'm setting it to approximately about four millimeters wide. And what you're going to do is just take your time and you're going to use the inside line as a guide and you're just going to go slowly around your piece. After you've gone all the way around your piece with the dividers, Repeat the same process with the talcum powder. Just a little bit of powder on your fingertips, rub it in again, and you end up with a, a line to follow as an exterior margin. Now, it may not be perfect, but guess what? You can make adjustments as you work, and as long as you're a little bit off on the outside, you can always make a correction towards the center. Now what I want to do is I want to get rid of the excess wax. It's easier to build a piece if you're only working with as much wax as you actually need to work with. So I'm going to go back to the jeweler saw and cut off the corners. Now if you're using a wax blade, be sure that you cut to the outside of your line so you can make adjustments with your file as necessary. Okay, so I've removed the corners of the piece and you can see it's just basically a real rough cut around it. So now what I can do is I can take the wax file and I'll just file to the line and I can make adjustments as necessary. Okay, now this took me a few minutes to perfect, but there we go. So you can see if I put the stone back, I have a nice even margin around the stone. So the next thing that I need to do is to relieve the interior of the piece. Remember, I'm adding a bezel to it, so I'm going to have to carve out an area that's slightly larger than the stone inside of that bezel. But let's deal with getting this at least started. So what I wanna do right now is I'm going to light my torch and remember, you're using denatured alcohol. Otherwise, you're going to be creating bad fumes in your work environment. And I'm going to use a straight wax tool. And this is because all I'm going to do is I'm going to use it like a drill. So what I'll do is I'll get this tool into the flame and get it nice and hot. And then I'm just going to pierce the, the interior of the piece so that I can saw out a little bit of the material. Okay, so this might be hot enough now. Let's try it. We'll just push a hole through. There we go, and I'll wiggle it around a little bit so that it stays open. Okay, so now I've got a nice hole in the center of the piece. I can blow out the, the torch and put down the tool. And now I'm going to thread this onto my jeweler saw. So even if I cut just a little bit away from that line that I made to show where the uh, stone will sit, I'll be fine because I just need a small seat for the stone to sit on after it's cast. Okay, so let's just cut that out. Remember, if you're not accurate with the wax blade, you can always go with a metal blade. It'll work just fine. It might take a little bit longer and your blade might get a little clogged with the wax, but it'll work. Okay, so I'll let that little piece of wax just fall into my sweep drawer. And I will deal with perfecting this a little bit more once I get the bezel made. So now let's deal with make, making that bezel. So I don't need much height. And you'll know from the video that we have in our playlist about how to set a cabochon stone that you just need the bezel to come up high enough to that point where the stone starts to just break over the top. And if you look at this stone, 
it's perfectly curved. It's a nice dome, so it doesn't have to be that high at all. And you can always adjust it with a file. So let's just make a very low bezel. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 22 gauge pink sheet wax and I'm going to put it on top of my cutting board. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ruler and I'm just going to measure from one end up about five millimeters. And I'll just take a tool and make a little mark to indicate where that five millimeter point is. And then I'll just come to the other side of the wax and I'm going to duplicate the same measurement on the other side of the wax. There we go. Then what I can do is I can just use the ruler, the metal ruler, and I'll put it at each point and I've got a manufactured edge of my wax right there, so I'm in really good shape. Then what I can do is if I bring back my torch and I light it, I'm just going to hold that ruler in place and I'm going to heat my blade. The reason why I heat my blade is because it will cut through the wax easier and it will leave a cleaner edge. So that's nice and warm, so I'm just going to slide it across now. And I should mention that what's great about using the cutting board is that the cutting board will let this break away really easily. So if I just bend the wax up, there's the material for the bezel left on the board. So it's a little bit long. I don't need that much to go around the stone. So I'm just going to use my X-Acto blade again and reduce the amount of wax to about half and set that aside. I could use that for another stone in the, in the future. So you're going to do this exactly the same way that you would do a normal bezel. I'm going to place it on one side of the stone and try to keep it straight up and down. Sometimes the wax is a little cool and stiff, so you need to warm it up with your fingers. And there we go. Now it's a little more pliable. Okay, so I just wrap it around the stone. And in this case, I'm not really concerned about where the seam is like I would be if it was a metal bezel. So it doesn't really matter where I put it. And you can see that I've got the wax going all the way around the stone with a little bit of overlap right there. Here, I'll lift it up to the camera so you can see a little bit better. And what I need to do is just position it clo as close as I can. I'll heat the X-Acto blade in the flame again and I'll just slice through it. There we go. And then I can put the two pieces together. Now, what I would recommend is, because there's a certain amount of shrinkage that's involved in the casting process, it's kind of a good idea to have it be just a tad loose. Because then that way, you don't have to worry about having to clean out the, the interior of the bezel when you go to set the stone. All right, so with that stone in place in the bezel, sitting on my cutting board, with my flame going, I'm gonna take the other wax tool and I'm just gonna heat this wax tool and I'll bring up my blue inlay wax. Now, what I like to do before I ever start to, to wax anything is I like to heat up the tool and just wipe it off. That, may, that way, I'm sure that I don't have any corrupted wax on the tool like any kind of soot or a mixture of waxes. I just know that all I'm using is blue inlay at this point. So anyway, I'll warm the tool and I'm just going to heat up the wax inside the little cup of wax. And I can take up just a small amount, that's all I need, and I'll warm it on the tool. Now, the tool has a little bend in it. And what I wanna do is I wanna melt the wax so that the, the wax drop will come to about that curve right there. And then that way it's easy enough for me to just bring it over here and let it fill in that seam. Now some of you are thinking, well, why didn't he use the perfect purple? That would have filled that gap easier. Well, the perfect purple I usually reserve for repairs. Something that's finished and I just want it to sink right in. I use the blue inlay for just creating a small seam. So I'm gonna, let me just fix it up here. 
Okay, so if you have an excess of wax, don't worry about it. Once it cools, I can just file it away. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there just to cool down, and I can go back to my seat for the bezel. I can blow out the, the lamp so I don't burn up too much fuel. Okay, for this next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse my blade and I'm going to use the back end of the blade. And I like doing this because I've got a perfect right angle on this blade. So it makes it really easy for me to carve a, a straight edge that the bezel will just sit straight into. So I can see the guideline of where the stone is going to fit. Let me add a little bit of talcum to that so you can see it better. There we go. So I can see that edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to scrape with my tool and I'm going to just kind of excavate this. So this is going to take me a little while and I'm just going to work on this and I'll come back and I'll show you the result. All right, let me clean this off a little bit and show you what I've got. So I completely cleared out and created a step in the interior of this platform and now the bezel that I made from the 22 gauge sheet will fit perfectly in there. And if you look over here what I did with this other one was I did a similar operation on the back side. And the reason why I did that was because you want to try to reduce the weight of your waxes as much as possible. It makes them more wearable as cast finished pieces and they're less expensive to cast. So save some money. You can do this to the back side. So now what I need to do is I need to secure this bezel into the interior of this platform. And I'm going to change my eyewear to my Optivisor so that I can see exactly what I'm doing. So what I want to do is I will take the torch or the um, the alcohol lamp here and my wax tool and I'm going to use the blue inlay wax again and let's see I'm going to sit down to do this so I can see it better and what I want to do is I just want to heat the tool and pick up some of the wax so that I'm able to direct it into the channel that lies between the the bezel the pink wax and the blue wax the platform and I just heat it and I'm just going to apply it around the bezel. And what this does is this helps me to make sure that the bezel won't come out and that it looks great when it's cast. And this is, unifies the piece together. Now remember, the things that I'm showing you in this video, I'm doing this in a very simple, handmade way because I know that some of you watching don't own things like flex shafts and other equipment that I might have here at the Online Jewelry Academy, but at least this way you can accomplish building a wax that you can take in for casting very easily. All right, so I'm just going to continue to go around with this and get this applied. Okay, so <clears throat> I finished applying the wax all the way around the bezel. It looks a little messy, but let me show you how to clean it up. The finishing on this is really simple. Now, I mentioned earlier that I was using this emery board, and if you notice, there's no abrasive material on the edge of this thing. So it's kind of like your beret file. And what you can do is just place it with that smooth edge against your bezel and run it over the top like so just to remove the excess wax, that blue inlay wax. So you can pretty much just get this surface very, very even and nice because it's so much easier to finish the wax than it is to manipulate it in metal. The last thing that you would do is you would take your orange oil with your piece of knee-high nylon and you're just going to get this just a little bit wet with this orange oil. There's also professional wax cleaning solution too that you could use and you just want to clean this up 
and you can see right there, it just is going to polish the wax. So you're going to do this all over the surface, front and back, and the orange oil will polish it. So you want to polish your piece in the wax before you take it to the caster. You want it to be beautiful. And that's how you put your bezel together. When you're done casting, this will be magically transformed into something like this. Isn't that great? It looks exactly like your wax and best of all, your stone will fit into it so you can make a beautiful piece of jewelry. I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to like it and don't forget to subscribe. You can find more exciting videos like this one on OnlineJewelryAcademy.com. And don't forget, we regularly post to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you'd like to support the production of a future video, you can do so by making a contribution through Patreon.com. Thanks for watching.